it's uh, not a vaccine, it's not a cure, but it is a treatment and the first treatment to have passed the trials. I mean, this is an extraordinarily hopeful breakthrough, isn't it? It's uh, some good news that uh, we can finally report on. It's really promising. It certainly cut the death rate in, in a, a randomised clinical trial. Uh, the 28-day mortality rate is decreased by 17%, so that's nearly, nearly a fifth of people surviving that perhaps wouldn't have survived without dexamethasone. Dexamethasone has been around for a long time. Um, it, it suppresses the immune response when that becomes overwhelming and dangerous. So we know that in some people, with the inflammation that the COVID-19 virus causes, you get an outpouring of fluid into the lungs, you get inflammation, and this suppresses all of that. We've used this drug for, for many, many years to reduce swelling on the brain. When the brain becomes inflamed, we use it to damp down the immune system for things like rheumatoid arthritis. We use it for skin inflammation. So a lot of them is known about it. Mm. However, we haven't used it before because, in theory, a steroid makes most infections worse by reducing the immune response. It's when the immune response is overwhelmingly exaggerated mm -hmm. where it becomes useful. So this clinical trial has shown real benefit over risk. Um, they, they put 2,000 patients on dexamethasone and 4,000 on other medicines, and this one by far showed a, greater, a much greater oh. benefit. And the good news globally is that it can be taken in tablet form. Unlike the other drugs that are often used and have to be given by infusion, this could be given very easily. And also the good news, Hilary, it's dirt cheap comparatively to many drugs. Yeah. It's readily available We've got around hundreds the world. of thousands of doses. And, you know, we, we know that this pandemic has a long way to run in places like Africa, for example. Sure. Hasn't really uh, uh, gripped uh, there yet. India, sure. uh, South America. And so this discovery now is going to be hugely important mm. and it's a great triumph for yeah. British UK scientists. Science. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, 175 NHS hospitals were involved in this trial, so thousands of doctors, nurses, pharmacists and research administrators were involved. It's a real triumph for the speed at which the UK yeah. has stepped in here and done the trial. Two really important caveats. First of all, it's of no use whatsoever in people who have mild disease. So yeah. if you're not needing oxygen, you don't need a ventilator, it's oh. not going to benefit you at all. So please, don't go rushing to the shops asking for dexamethasone, because it won't help you at all. It's not a preventative. The second thing is, as I say, it's, easily, it's readily available, it's cheap, cheap as chips, and it can be taken in tablet form. So in countries where people can't get to hospital, even though they're very sick, yeah, huge. it will make a huge difference potentially. And the, the important thing, this is why I got Thanks. so annoyed with uh, Donald Trump, you know, just spouting off his theories about, about hydroxychloroquine. hydroxychloroquine and other things without them going through these proper trials. Because mm. when they finally did the trials on hydroxychloroquine, which helps in many other things, you know, my dad takes it for, mm. for uh, rheumatoid arthritis and it helps him enormously. Um, but it didn't turn out to help people who were seriously well, ill with COVID. negative effects. No. It actually it? had a harmful effect on some of the patients. <laughs> it did, did more the... harm than good. And Not that's deplete. why... People who are world leaders like Trump need to shut up about this stuff until they've got to the stage that well, Oxford have reached with this one, where it's properly trialled, and actually they can see demonstrably it is going to have a huge benefit. Absolutely. And, and you know, people don't really understand how, uh, how detailed clinical trials have to be conducted. They have to be so carefully conducted. You have to compare to uh, another group of people who are not on the medicine. Uh, you have to make sure all the, all the, um, the, the confounding factors are, are, are taken into account. Uh, so it, it's painstaking mm -hmm. and it's brilliant what they've done in Oxford. It really is. And it's very encouraging. We also are currently trialling many other drugs. I mentioned dexamethasone probably a month ago. The trial started in March. But um, antiviral drugs uh, that are used in HIV, they're looking at convalescent plasma. So they're taking the antibodies from people who've recovered, hoping that those antibodies might work. They're that doing that. Isn't the, um, the health secretary, Matt Hancock, as someone who's recovered from COVID, isn't he donating... His yep, plasma to that trial, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. They've got other mon monoclonal antibodies. They're, they've already dismissed the efficacy of uh, hydroxychloroquine. Mm -hmm. doesn't work. Um, but they're looking at all sorts of things. And, and hopefully, bit by bit, we can add to the effect of, um, uh, of dexamethasone with other medicines, which will also uh, help a great deal. Remdesivir was spoken about reducing the length of duration of the illness from... 15 days to 11, but without necessarily reducing the mortality rate. But piece by piece, 
we're getting on top of the virus and, and there is hope for the future. Yeah, I've always said, uh, Hillary, we've talked about this, there, there's only three ways out of this. Yes. Uh, one is a vaccine, yep. which may never be discovered. We have to accept that. Uh, secondly, uh, I've always said the treatment might be like it was with HIV, the key thing, if you can stop people dying. Yeah. That's a massive part of it, isn't it? Or a cure. Um, yeah. Or you have a, a, a cure in some way. Mm. Um, yeah, but in the meantime, you know, what's, what's really important in all this is we, we mustn't get carried away by a report that says we've cut the death rate by a third and people on ventilators. Look, it's the death rate with people on ventilators, even with dexamethasone, is still 28%. Yeah. Right? So it's still massively high. This is still a very nasty virus. Yeah. And the future um, for our country in, in terms of health means that people still must be really careful about uh, social distancing. That and hand washing still is going to be the controlling thing until we have a really robust test and trace system, which we don't currently... I still haven't met anybody who's had right. even a cold uh, in this whole process. In other words, the social distancing, the lack of touching... And the hand washing. ..is clearly having a materially beneficial mm. effect. Forget COVID, put that to one side. But in all other areas of normal infections from people to people, I think there's going to be dramatic reduction in that going forward generally. And well, that will have actually... It, it's that ultimately will have a benefit, it? won't it? If that, if that becomes a behavioural change where we just stop touching each other and we give each other a bit more space. Well, I think it's I imagine much more also. hygiene conscious. You know, I think we'll see less food poisoning. I think we'll see less yeah. colds and coughs. Can I just ask Dr Hillary, though, the flip side of that? Um, because there's something called the hygiene hypothesis, isn't it? That actually you can be very, very clean, but that that can actually mean that you don't build up immunity to bugs. So could it have... Of course, it's vitally important with this, you know, horrible, lethal virus. But what about our immunity generally and needing to become immune to certain things? Sure, it, it's, a, it's a balance. I mean, our skin is covered with trillions of, uh, of cell, of, of bacteria, uh, most of which are harmless. We live, uh, we need them. They're, 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 um, uh, they're, they're what we call um, a symbiotic uh, organisms which help us to uh, digest our food in our gut. They help us to uh, keep our skin healthy. So, so we need some bugs and we're exposed to antigens from microorganisms all the time. We need them. And there is a theory that, you know, if we, if we excessively clean and scrub uh, <laughs> and get rid of these friendly bacteria, that we make ourselves more prone to things like allergy.